Holt with you for another virtual art lesson. Today I'm going to introduce you to a really incredible artist named Mary Blair. Mary Blair was an um, animator and design, concept design artist for the Walt Disney Company back in the 40s and 50s and in the 60s. She is responsible for some of the mo most beloved animations in Disney film history, as well as the theme park attractions. Mary Blair worked on movies like Cinderella, she worked on Alice in Wonderland, and Peter Pan. These are all the cartoon versions from way back when, not the current films that we've seen today. She's also worked on creating the des concept design for one of the most famous rides at Disney World called It's a Small World. She created the concept for the outside of the castle, which is the facade when you walk into the ride. If you've never been to Disney World or Disneyland, it's been a really long time since Ms. Holt's been, so I don't super remember it very well, but It's a Small World is a really fun ride where you get on and they have all of these children of the world dressed in their, their cultural costumes and a song plays and you can go around and learn a little, about, a little bit about all of the different cultures of the world. So let's watch a little video about Mary Blair. It's a quick documentary. It's really interesting and it shows a lot of cool things that she's done in her career as a Disney animator and concept design artist. <laughs> Mary Blair was born in 1911 in Oklahoma, and um, within a few years, her, her folks and her siblings moved to um, San Jose area. She had a scholarship to the Chouinard Art Institute in Los Angeles, which was quite prestigious during the 1930s, and um, she excelled at the school. And she met Lee Blair, her husband, there. And they saw themselves as fine artists. And that was the track they were both going to go down. And then I think to make money in the Depression, it was very tough to work as a fine artist. So they had to look for work. And uh, some of the best commercial work around was the, to work in animation. Lee got a job at Disney. Then uh, everybody started talking about how wonderful Mary was using color. And they were suggesting to Walt that he bring Lee's wife in. She started working, I believe it was 1941. She did some preliminary sketches for Dumbo and various projects that didn't get off the ground, including a second version of Fantasia back in 1941. But then when Walt was going to South America as part of the good neighbor policy and to do research for a series of films that he wanted to make there, he invited the Blairs along. When she went to South America, I mean, truly, uh, truly, that was the full flowering of Mary Blair. All her work from that period on was heavily influenced by all kinds of ethnic cultures. And I think by going there, it just opened her eyes to that and in a graphic way that she could push her work even more. She did wonderful sketches while she was there. I believe it was Saludos Amigos, the scenes where you were up at the top of the mountains looking down onto the lake with the boats and it's just magnificent and patterned sidewalks. <laughs> It was just terrific. You can see in those pieces that transition from the more realistic watercolor to what she later did, which was really stylized and, and very theatrical. You can see Mary Blair and her style very clearly in The Little House, which was a, a short that was made. Once upon a time, there was a little house on a little hill way out in the country. She also influenced the color palette of the compilation feature of Nicobod and uh, Mr. Toad. Those scenes in the um, spooky forest where Ichabod's trying to get home. <laughs> those color changes, those are pure Mary Blair. She really was able to set the emotional mood for key moments in the film. Yeah! Mark Davis always said that uh, Mary Blair could put colors together like nobody else. You know, she was better than Matisse, he said, and uh, she was just one of those geniuses. And then one day in uh, 1963, 
Walt said, I want Mary Blair to do the settings for this little boat that goes through all the countries of the world. And yes, Walt Disney asked her to come and uh, design the look of the small world ride when, uh, the, that we've written the song for. It's a small world. And that's the name of our latest attraction at Disneyland. Its stars are the children of the world. Every land from A to Z, from Asia to Zululand is represented. Walt Disney's secretary called me on the phone and asked if I would like to do the costumes for Small World. And I said, would I? It was far beyond anything I'd ever dreamt could happen in my life and still is one of the best things that ever happened. I learned so much from her and we had a lot of laughs and such together too. And it was like her coming home in a way and she just loved working on the project. I want you to meet Mary Blair. Mary, Hi. this is Julie Reams. Hello, Julie. Nice Will you tell her what you're doing here, Mary? We start this way, making a preliminary sketch. All of these marvelous drawings and uh, concepts came pouring out of her. And you see all of them, if you take the boat ride at Disneyland or Disney, Walt Disney World, there it is, it's three-dimensional Mary Blair. The whole idea of the ride is it's taking you around the world, right? It's really representing all these different cultures. And she's doing that with these blocks of color. Sometimes very, very abstract references to architecture or design motifs from around the world. And it, it's pretty stunning. And I know that we felt, all of us, that, that worked on this thing, tremendously happy that the public really dug it. They really went for it. And I think Mary felt that. I think all the people that worked on this wonderful, wonderful project uh, felt the same way. And we felt very completed. <laughs> guys so I want to take you through a really cool video I found um, of somebody going through the it's a small world attraction um, last year 2019 during the holidays so literally right around this time last year is when this video was taken so every year during the holidays at Walt Disney um, theme parks they redecorate and put up all kinds of holiday lights and decorations and they completely redo it's a small world to reflect the different holiday traditions of the cultures that they're showing um, from all the different places around the world so it's a really cool video I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you can notice and point out some of the artwork that Mary Blair contributed to this attraction <laughs>
Remain seated until your boat comes to a complete stop at the dock and you're... So as we learned from our video, Mary Blair was a really influential 
concept design artist, as well as an animator for the Walt Disney Company. These are some images of some mock-up concept designs for the It's a Small World attractions. So Disney has It's a Small World rides all over the world in their various parks. Um, Disney has a park in Paris, and Shanghai, and Tokyo. All over the world there are Disney um, parks. Mary Blair has all these different concept designs for those parks. Color is very important to Mary Blair, as well as um, shapes and repeated patterns. So Mary Blair likes to choose a color scheme and stick to those specific colors. Um, she uses repeated shapes and patterns in her artwork, which creates a kind of rhythm or unity <clears throat> in her castle designs. So we are going to be creating our own Mary Blair castles today, inspired by her work on the It's a Small World ride in Disney World. So you're going to need a few things to start. Obviously paper, um, something to draw with, and something to color with. So gather your materials and let's get started. So like I said, you're going to need some paper, um, a pencil, a sharpie if you have it, or black marker. A ruler would be very helpful for this project, but you don't really need a ruler. And then also something that you would like to color with. doesn't have to be crayons. I just chose crayons for this specific piece of artwork. So I'm just going straight in with my Sharpie and my ruler. And I'm going to start on the far side of my paper and just use the rectangle of my ruler to create my first shape of my castle. You can go back and look at all the different pictures of Mary Blair castles as inspiration as well. Um, but she uses a lot of geometric shapes as well as some organic shapes. Um, but it works out really nicely to just use the actual ruler itself to help create those spires or towers in your castles. Mary Blair likes to top her spires with triangles as well as some circles right there at the top of the triangle. And then this kind of funky oblong shape. Um, that kind of looks like an eye if you look at it sideways. Um, but she likes to use these shapes to top the spires of her castles. And you'll see these repeated pattern of triangle, circle, um, oblong shape, and a circle on top over and over again in her castles. She also repeats this shape at the bottom, almost like a flower petal, um, to signify like a, an entrance way into the castle. So you're just going to create your castle drawing um, different rectangles and squares, splitting those up into different sections um, because that's how she likes to add in some patterns. So I'm just going through the specific spire and adding in um, one of her um, famous patterns. She likes to do circles down the middle um, within another circle and then some other things on the sides. For the next tower, I'm again going to use the width of my ruler to guide me, but I'm going to make it a little bit shorter than the first tower. So I'm going to go right next to it, trace around my ruler to create the rectangle shape of the second spire. I'm also going to use my ruler to divide that rectangle into a smaller rectangle and a smaller square just to give me some different places to add in my Mary Blair patterns. I'm repeating that flower shape again um, to create the illusion of like an entryway or a doorway. Mary Blair adds a lot of different kinds of circles um, and squares into her artwork as the pattern and design elements. Mary Blair also uses a lot of inverted triangles um, and circles to add some more pattern and depth to her work. She likes to top her spires or the towers of the castles with different things. Um, this is one example of a way to top your towers if you'd like. They're almost like a curved triangle um, or an hourglass shape. And then on top, there's really two tall triangles um, to top it off. And then, of course, the small little circles um, to add that continuity between all of them. I'm going to go through and add some more patterns to these different shapes. So I'm just going to fast forward through that. The next step is to draw the long, the biggest rectangle of the castle, which would be like the main part of the castle. So I'm just going to draw a straight line across 
and then another vertical line to create the um, edge of my castle. And this is going to be where the two main entrances go. So again, I'm repeating those flower petal shapes um, and just outlining them to add more depth to them as well. Now I'm going to add the tower on the other side of my um, castle just to echo and balance out the left side of the castle with the right. And this is going to be a taller tower than the first two. And again, I'm just using the width of my ruler to create those rectangles. One more tower that I'm adding over there as well. I'm also going to add another rectangle on top of that main one at the bottom. And that's going to be where I create a lot of different squares and rectangles within that to add a large variety of shapes and patterns. So I'm just using my ruler and the width of my ruler to create some repeated rectangles. Um, some are larger, some are smaller, just to add variety. And then I'm going to use my ruler again to go horizontally and add in some, to divide these rectangles up into smaller squares and smaller rectangles. I don't want them all to be on the same level, so I might skip a rectangle or move my ruler down one um, or just a little bit so I can add and change up the variety um, and the size of the squares. As I'm adding in some more of these flower petal like shapes, I want to remind you that this is your artwork. You don't have to continue um, along and draw the same castle as me. In fact, I'd rather you not. Um, I'd rather you look at some of Mary Blair's artwork, look at some of my artwork and the, the process and how I created it to create your very own castle. Just using the, the design elements of Mary Blair as your inspiration. So now I'm going to go back into some of those squares and rectangles and add some more of those Mary Blair style patterns. She really liked to use these X's in the squares that creates four triangles. And then when we color them in, she would like to color them in a specific way. So that will make sense later. One of my favorite design elements that Mary Blair adds to her castles are these bridges up on the top of the castle. So to create that, you're just going to draw a semicircle. And I use the width of that larger square um, to guide how large my semicircle should be. Then you're going to take your ruler or your straight edge and line up the sides. Just a little line there and the same on the other side and a straight line across and that is going to create your little bridge. She also liked to add these triangles on top so I added three triangles right on top to create um, the bridge look that she has in her artwork. Next I'm just adding some details to the roof line, um, alternating instead of just the straight wall tri triangles, some of them are a little bit more curved. And I'm also adding in some more rectangles and squares to the other two spires on the other side of the castle and adding in some of those repeating patterns. As you move through the rest of the work, you can add in any shapes. Um, or patterns that you like to finish off your castle, any of those fine details um, to create the finished look of your castle. Remember to use those repeating um, shapes and patterns that you've already used to create unity within your artwork. The last step is to color in your castle. Choose six or seven colors um, and use those colors in, along with black um, to fill in the different shapes and patterns of your castle. I'm fast forwarding through this. I used crayons. You could use colored pencils, markers, crayons, whatever you have at home that you like to color with, you can use that. Um, but again, I chose probably six or seven, I think I chose seven colors, including black, and I just kind of stuck to those colors. Make sure you're not putting the same color right next to itself. Um, I, I used a lot of different shades or tones of blue, 
Um, so I've got that teal, the light blue, dark blue, and then like a gray blue. Um, but they're not all the same temperature of blue. So you want to go in and fill in each little section. Um, some pieces you can leave white, um, but don't go overboard with the white. This last step is completely optional. Um, Mary Blair's castles um, usually are on a black background. So I used um, some black India ink. You could use black paint. You could use black marker to go around the outside or the background behind your castle, or you could leave it white. It's up to you. Um, this is just an optional step to your final product. If you like that look, you can use anything um, black and just go around the outside of all of your castle details. Make sure you pay really close attention to all those really fine details and that you are not um, going into any of the things that you shouldn't be. Alright guys, so this is how my final artwork turned out. I hope you enjoyed learning about um, a really incredible artist in Mary Blair and enjoyed learning about a little bit what, about what happens behind the scenes at Walt Disney. Remember Mary Blair used color, um, shape, and pattern in her artworks. I hope you enjoyed creating art with me today and we'll see you again next time.